Okay, I just got the thumbs up so we can get this show on the road. Everybody still awake? Hello? Wow, this is pretty awesome for Fosdem that everybody's still awake. I hope you like it. I chose a black background so nobody has to look at really bright colors. I tried to keep the Im images a bit low so everybody who has a, a hangover like me should be uh, pretty much okay with the presentation. Um, this, is, this presentation is an adventure story. And hence I chose this image to uh, kick it off. It's an adventure story about how got I got involved with Apache Cloud Stack. Well, I'm going to skip most of that part, but ex as, uh, especially. Five minutes early. Yeah, he gave a thumbs up, so he said, get started. Yeah. <laughs> so even though we're five minutes early, we uh, get started anyway. Hmm? No, actually not, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm a dead serious guy, I don't do jokes. It's, sorry. <laughs> no. So, uh, who am I? Well, I'm Hugo. Um, working as a mission critical, en mission critical engineer for Schubert Phyllis back in the Netherlands. I'm also part of the project management uh, committee of Apache CloudStack. Contributor at Open Daylight, especially on the OVSDB part which I will be telling about uh, today. And actually, if I have some spare time, I try to spend it behind one of my PlayStations. Uh, though, unlucky for me, I don't have that much time for it nowadays, since I'm working on all those projects. If you want to reach me for some, uh, some reason, there's a lot of contact details over there. Please try not to tweet too much during the presentation, otherwise my pocket will keep on uh, buzzing. So what I want to do today is tell a bit how uh, how I got involved with the Open Daylight project. Uh, Open Daylight is a project. There's uh, a lot of noise going about about uh, Open Daylight, and uh, uh, yeah, I decided to have a look at what it, what it is, what can be used for, and especially since I'm working with the Apache CloudStack project as well, and my main focus within Apache CloudStack is software-defined networking. Open Daylight for me was really interesting to look uh, to look into. So I'm going to tell you a little bit of background about Apache CloudStack, a little bit of background about Open Daylight. Um, I'm going to ask the question that everybody should be asking in this room, why, would you, why the hell would, would you want to integrate those two projects? And I'm going to tell a bit about my adventure stories, and the adventure part here is what actually happens if you decide to take a step and integrate two projects. So, Apache Cloud Stack. Apache Cloud Stack is an IaaS offering. So it's a cloud management system. It, it orchestrates your uh, uh, hypervisors, it orchestrates your networking, and it orchestrates your stor storage. It's a uh, mainly Java-based project. It's been around for quite a long time, though it uh, gained the most momentum actually when it joined the Apache Software Foundation. But it has been existing for quite a while before that. Uh, we're currently on our, yeah, on the release 4.3, or close to releasing 4.3. Pretty stable uh, platform. A lot of enterprises uh, actually using it. Uh, we get a lot of positive feedback, both from open source communities, but also from commercial parties who are building businesses around CloudStack. So it, it's get, really getting a lot of momentum. And one of the things I like about the uh, Apache CloudStack uh, bit of software is that uh, yeah, it supports a multitude of different hypervisors, networking platforms, etc. cetera. Uh, here's some of the networking platforms that we support. We support Nasir MVP, we support uh, Midikura, we support uh, Stratosphere, Big Switch. The unlucky part for a lot of people is that most of these offerings are actually commercial offerings. So, hence I'm really glad that I can actually be here and talk about integrating an open source software defined networking platform. And that's this one. That's Open Daylight. Well, actually, Open Daylight is a lot more. Open Daylight is quite a big project. There's a lot of big vendors and a lot of enthusiastic volunteers working on the project. And it's really. It, and, and, it's more about facilitating the community. It's about providing a stable, available controller platform that can support a variety of software-defined networking uh, tools, but also network function virtualization. It literally does a lot. Uh, I listed a few of the things that I've uh, found, but yeah, uh, there was a session earlier uh, yesterday about application archaeology. I think that suits this. Really dive into it and see what it all supports. It's, it's almost impossible to keep up. Everything okay? Seems to be tech, no problem. Uh, just with the screen, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> so the things I've been looking at is mainly at the network virtualization part, and then you hit stuff like OpenFlow, you hit stuff like Open uh, OVSDB, virtual tenant network, OpenDoff, 
but as, yeah, there's support for the board. It supports hardware, it supports uh, software switches, really a lot of things. So when I found Open Daylight and started looking into the project, I said, okay, there's some serious potential here. Um, it has the possibility of yeah, working with an open community, working with an open source uh, software to yeah, basically get my needs for Apache Cloud Stack and have them with an open project. So that was actually the tricky part. So what is it exactly that I need? So then, uh, uh, yeah, looking at the Apache Cloud Stack networking setup, it's the basic of what we do within, uh, with the networking part of Apache Cloud Stack. It's like, okay, so what do we have in Apache Cloud Stack? So we have basic networking. Basic networking is, well, it, basically the old Amazon style networking. Everything on a big flat IP network, uh, isolated using security groups and some voodoo that deals with filtering MAC addresses, etc., to make sure that you have some kind of tenant isolation. Then there's the advanced networking. It's actually, well, not even as advanced, but that's how it's called at the moment. But the advanced network, the, the difference here is that it is layer two separation. So it's really, you get your own private broadcast domain. And actually we're using, yeah, I think nowadays it's called network function virtualization. We use a router construct that deals with all the stuff like routing, firewalling, load balancing, etc. And it sits between your network and the outside world and allows you to yeah, make use of its services and also give you some privacy on your own uh, network. We support uh, virtual private cloud, which is actually a, yeah, it's almost the same as an isolated network, except it's a multi-tiered network. And for me, the advanced networking is really the most interesting bit. I'm, uh, the company I work for, we actually, we're users of CloudStack. We, uh, we are not selling any product based on CloudStack. We're not involved with the community. We're not selling hardware, anything. We're just users of CloudStack. For us, it's really, uh, speed up? Okay. So, is this better? Yeah, okay, sorry about that. So, um, let me repeat the really the basics about networking because it's actually the most important part that we will be talking about for the rest of the presentation. So there's basic networking, separation based on L3, and there's advanced networking with separation based on layer two, individual broadcast domains. And as I was saying, I'm really a user of CloudStack. We use it to, uh, inside our company for a lot of different purposes. And for me, the advanced networking is really the interesting thing. We have a lot of networks. We create networks every five minutes. And VLANs just didn't cut it anymore for us. So quite a while back, we actually switched to using software-defined networking. And software-defined networking really fits with the advanced networking model, where we can create isolated broadcast domains on any kind of infrastructure without having to rely on switches doing a lot of the VLAN work, uh, going into the switches, configuring them. So we're really a, a fanatic user about software-defined networking. So we were already using it, and I was working with the uh, Nistera MVP mostly, and then I found the Open Daylight uh, project. Um, with my hat on as Apache project management mem member committee, it, it was an easy decision. Uh, we need to do something with Open Daylight. It's a fantastic project, a lot of nice people over there. Uh, it's supporting just about anything you can find in a networking stack at the moment that's open and, uh, and available. Um, and, well, as Apache Cloud Stack, we're a cloud management system. We're basically an orchestrating party. Uh, if there's nothing we can orchestrate with, we're a pretty useless project. So orchestrating with open daylight means for us that we can actually uh, be part of a bigger, we can expand our ecosystem we can expand our usability for our users. So it's really a good match, and yeah, it's an open project, so that was great. Um, and one of the other big reasons is that there was a lot of talk about, should we be doing something with SDN? Of course, we had support for software-defined networking vendors already in CloudStack, but yeah, you want some open solution, you want somebody people can just download, use, uh, and build software-defined networking uh, with in CloudStack. So we already have some support. We have support for VXLAN, we have support for GRE. So basically, we're already acting like a bit of a controller. But there's people actually more knowledgeable about building controllers. We're really good at orchestrating stuff, and maybe we should leave the networking controller bit to actually other projects who have the networking people and the know-how and the technology to actually do it. And Open Daylight is one such project. They really have the knowledgeable people about software-defined networking. So we can leverage those, yeah, those great minds and get our stuff for free. And of course, as everybody know, here knows, it's actually quite fun to do such a project. So that's when really, for me, the fun started. So 
uh, I already found open, open Daylight. I was getting involved and was like, okay, now I have a project with about 20 sub-projects. What the hell am I going to support here? Um, so it was really time to sit down and say, okay, what is actually that I want to do? I can just about integrate anything from Open Daylight, but what's actually useful from a user perspective, what's usable for me to do as a first step in the integration part? So I said, okay, my goal is going to be I want to have a couple of KVM hypervisors and I want to be able to build an overlay network between those hypervisors. Really, the bare bones about what it is that virtual networking provides you, overlay networking provides for you. So I decided, okay, that's going to be pretty easy. So it's on to the API. That's actually going to be a really tricky bit. But I'll explain that later. Because then we found the next problem. Yeah. What the? I mean, okay, I said I want K KVM support. I want uh, to build an overlay network. There's actually quite a few projects providing overlay networking in Open Daylight. There's virtual tenant networking. There's OpenDOF. And there's the open uh, OVSDB uh, plugin that works together with the OpenFlow plugin. For me, I selected the OVSDB and OpenFlow plugin, uh, mainly because it's stuff I'm familiar with. I'm already used to working with OVSDB. I'm used to working with OpenFlow. So for me, it was something I could understand it. I could work with it. And seemed, at the time, a pretty easy to get into. How wrong I was, because it was nowhere near finished. I mean, we're currently ju just about to release our first release of Open Daylight, the Hydrogen uh, release. Um, at the time I joined the project, that's a couple of months ago and now, it was really in, in no state to be usable. It was, it was a bunch of great minds and a bunch of great ideas and some code, but nothing really usable yet. So let's get into it. Um, before we get into the details, just a bit of a, a background about what it is we intended to do. So in Open Daylight, there was already a lot of support for OpenFlow. And OpenFlow is actually the protocol that will yeah, basically replace your control plane on your switches. So you have the data forwarding plane, which actually takes packets from A, dumps them on port B. And then you have the control plane. And for those of you who have been in networking, that's usually the stuff you configure using Telnet or SSH. You go in and you tell the a port is part of a certain VLAN. Or actually, you tell the router or you tell the switch how to make its decisions on where packets should go. And if you're using software-defined networking, it's usually the controller that's going to be telling the switch how to do it and where to forward packets. And the way the controller tells the switch how to forward packets and what to do with certain packets coming in on ports, that's the OpenFlow protocol. So the OpenFlow protocol is actually a really simple rule-based protocol. You build a table of rules into your switch, and a rule can be as simple as a packet coming in on port 1. Please tag it with VLAN 100 and send it out on port B or send it to a controller, which is really interesting. So you can suddenly send a packet that's coming in on port one, you can send it to a controller, controller pick it up, look at it, make some intelligent decision about where this packet should go, and send that conclusion back to the switch. The OpenFlow plugin was pretty much already in uh, Open Daylight at the time. So it was mostly used uh, to control the hardware um, as the, yeah, say the first step of uh, software-defined networking, controlling your switches from a central uh, controller instead of going into the switch and doing SSH uh, stuff. That was already in uh, uh, in Open Daylight, but the thing missing there is actually the control layer. As we now have a lot of hypervisors and we want to do a virtual networking on hypervisors, there's a layer between the hardware we have in the data center and the VM running on a hypervisor. And this layer in most often is Open vSwitch nowadays. So Open vSwitch is a real switch in any sense of the world. Uh, it, yeah, the packet forwarding supports all kinds of open standards. But there's one tricky problem with Open vSwitch, is that it has no fixed hardware. If you look at a real switch, the one you put in your data center, it has like 24 ports. You can give them a number, port 1, port 24. And it's, it's fairly easy to understand if you want to configure something on port 1, you configure it on port 1. If you have Open vSwitch, it's actually far more complex, because how many ports do I have? Where are my ports? Where are they? How, what do they look like? Are they interfaces? Are they bridge ports? Are they patch ports to other uh, switches? Um, and that's where the OVSDB interface comes in. It's like the, the meta management system of the Open vSwitch. You can tell it to create a port because yeah, if you want to you know, boot a virtual machine, it needs a virtual interface and the virtual interface needs to be plugged 
onto the OpenV switch and for that you need a port. If you have multiple switches inside your OpenV switch and you want to connect them, you need to create patches between the two ports. That's all done using software and the software doing it is the OVSDB uh, daemon. And the OVSDB daemon uses a JSON RPC protocol which is called yeah, OVSDB protocol. And it provides you with centralized management of your OpenV switches so you can really uh, configure all the stuff you need to configure from a central point. At the time when I get, uh, got into the project, the OVSDB plugin wasn't really uh, uh, well defined yet. It was, it was a couple of ideas about where we wanted to go, where we wanted to take uh, the plugin, but a lot of yeah, uh, bright ideas, but no real conclusions yet. So, uh, that's actually the point where the integration starts to be really interesting. Up until that point, it was all like Google research and downloading the code, doing a lot of Git clones, trolling through the, the mailing list archives and seeing what actually happened. This was a scary bit about the integration because suddenly I had to talk to a human about this. And it was really, it, it, it was a very nice experience. I mean, everybody working in open source communities knows that if you join a new community, it can be either a very friendly community or it can be a hostile community or it can be a community that completely ignores you. In this case, I found two people, or actually I found a lot of people, but two people really stood out. I got in touch with Brent Salisbury. I don't know if you guys know him uh, better as the name Network Static, but if you don't, please look up his blog. If you ever want to know something about uh, Open vSwitch and software defined networking, it's on his blog. And I found Madhu Penchupal, and I hope I just pronounced his name right, I'm not sure. Those guys really uh, welcomed me with open arms. They sat down, made a lot of time, I mean, I was on IFC for about an hour talking to these guys, and then they said, hey, we're gonna, gonna open up a Google video call. Why don't you join? And we're gonna sit down and really explain what you need to know and how we can help you. And before I know it, I was actually, yeah, part of a community. I mean, and that was like in, in two or three hours time, I was part of a community that I've never been part of. And that's really a great welcoming community. And I think that's really part of what open source is all about is, yeah being friendly to each other and helping each other out. So I had, I had a couple of new friends, and we started to sit down and say, okay, so what are you guys working on? Well, they were working on a lot of things. Um, for example, one of the discussions we're having is like, okay, we want to do integration, and they were working, mainly working on integration with OpenStack, and I was working uh, on integration with CloudStack, and we're having discussions like, where actually do we want to integrate? There's multiple levels available in Open Daylight. Open Daylight is such a flexible platform. You can integrate on the very low level, uh, and with low level, an OVSDB plugin really meant like Open Daylight being a portal into the OVSDB, like a wrapper. It would just yeah, be a wrapper between the OVSDB protocol and the REST API provided by Open Daylight, allowing me direct interaction with the OVSDB. On the other hand, there were also various levels of higher layer APIs. So the first question everybody asked, and we asked the same question uh, from the OpenStack Neutron perspective and from Cloudstack perspective, is what is it we actually want to, want to do? Uh, where, do we want, where do we want to integrate? So there was a lot of, a, a lot of fun dis discussions. It was really about what is the purpose of each project? And finally, we sort of sat down and decided, okay, we want the cloud management systems to do just that, cloud management. Leave them to do the orchestration bit, leave them to actually select what needs to be done, and then trust the open daylight part to actually do the stuff. I don't need to know how you create a port in OVSDB. I don't need to know that if you create a network interface, you first need to create a port and then attach it to the interface. That's actually not that interesting to me. I just want to make sure that if I create a virtual machine and I tell something that I need a port, all the relevant parts will be done. And the next thing was, okay, so now we've decided that we're going to put a lot of intelligence or at least a lot of the day-to-day -day heavy lifting in the Open Daylight uh, OVSDB plugin. Where are we going to put the brains? Who's going to be responsible for knowing what to do? Who's going to be the owner of the current state? Again, that's an interesting discussion. Uh, cloud management systems traditionally have a view like they own the world. Cloud management system is the boss. It knows it, and every other system has to comply to their wishes. Um, might be a very good idea, because cloud management system is supposed to have a very overall, very broad view about your entire setup. But on the other hand, stuff like Open Daylight, the project of Open Daylight, it knows a lot about the network. So where do we actually put 
the real interesting data like what are the connected hypervisors, who's in charge of knowing what kind of switches are available, who knows which ports are enabled and which ports are having a certain administrative state. We spend a lot of time discussing this and actually we, yeah, we haven't found the real answer yet. At the moment, we say cloud management system owns the state. So the amount of uh, which hypervisors are connected to a particular network, which virtual machines are running on a particular network, that's all state that is in the cloud management system. So if there's any kind of disruption in the communication between open daylight and any cloud management system or uh, stuff, that's where we're actually going to look. So we're going to look towards the cloud management system and say, okay, let's push new data, sync the data into open daylight. That's one too fast. And there's actually some timing issues. Um, open Daylight was slated to have a release on December 9th, the first hydrogen release. We slipped a bit with the release date, so we're now actually closing in on the release date. So we had a lot of great ideas in, the, uh, in Open Daylight where we wanted to go. We wanted to create an OVSDB plugin that would really allow you to manipulate any kind of OVSDB type of system, implementing the JSON RPC protocol to manage OVSDB. And we wanted to have another plugin that actually does all the, uh, the heavy lifting of working with Open vSwitch and actually making it into a system that allows you to plug multiple types of uh, OVSDB using uh, uh, modules in there. Uh, we just couldn't get it done with the time available and with the people available. So we ended up with a sort of hybrid solution where we have a almost generic OVSDB integration which d implements the uh, JSON RPC protocol as defined in the request for comments. Um, but it's also mixed with a lot of high, yeah, higher level code where we make decisions which are particular for Open vSwitch. Like we know that Open vSwitch, if I create a bridge, I need to create the bridge and I need to add it to the Open vSwitch database. That's something that's really specific for Open vSwitch. At the moment, it's still in the generic OVSDB code because that, at the time, it was the best solution to actually get something working for the hydrogen release. Might not be the best or the most ideal solution, but for now, it's, yeah, it's the way we, uh, we actually made progress and we actually have some working uh, stuff out there in the release. So again, there was yeah, a lot of discussions going on in the weekly meetings is about, okay, what actually is, what do we want to do and what's feasible to actually do in a project? But in the end, we got things done. So I'm just focusing on the cloud stack uh, uh, side here, but actually we got uh, OVSDB, we got the module done, we got it into a release state, we managed to get a really stable API out there. Uh, there's a Neutron integration for, OVS to, uh, for OVSDB, and there's a cloud stack uh, plugin. And the cloud stack plugin is now pushed into the ACS master branch, so it's later for the next release. Not gonna be in the 4.3 release, but hopefully it's gonna make the 4.4 release. Depends a bit on where we go with both the Open Daylight project and the CloudStack project. But for now, we're hoping that we have a stable controller platform in Open Daylight so we can push a stable plugin with CloudStack for the next uh, development iteration. So let's get a bit into detail about what we built. So, and the setup, like I explained in the beginning of my talk, the, the purpose was to have a couple of KVM hypervisors and be able to build an overlay network between them. So my test setup <laughs> consists of two KVM hypervisors, Open vSwitch installed on them, a CloudStack management server, and an Open Daylight controller. It is actually a pretty easy setup. You can set up in VirtualBox on your own machine. Um, there's some pre-setup that you need to do. We couldn't get everything in time into the open, uh, OVSDB plugin, so there's a couple of configuration issues uh, you need to do if anybody runs to repeat the tests. Yeah. Just shoot me an email or contact me on IC and we'll get you sorted. Everything else actually done by software. So in, open in CloudStack, uh, we built a plugin and as part of the plugin we created the UI and part of the UI is actually adding and the controller. And here we try to keep stuff as simple as possible. So by adding a controller to a network or adding a controller to a physical network in CloudStack, it means that you have a construct where you can send commands and which you can enable for individual networks. So here's just a simple screenshot. And for those of you know, who want to know, those question marks are about me not really understanding the internationalization in CloudStack. It should be fixed somewhere. Um, but the main point here is that we can now attach, 
open an open daylight controller to a CloudStack physical network. And for CloudStack, this particularly means that we have the ability to configure it, to use it, and to make it part of any user's network. If we want to make it part of the network for a particular user, uh, we use a model that's called the offering model in CloudStack. So in CloudStack, if I want to give something, make a resource available to a user, I create an offering, and an offering consists of several settings. For example, if you have a compute offering, uh, it can be a number of CPUs, a couple of megahertz, or an amount of memory. And in this case, we're focusing on the networking offerings. And on the networking offerings, I'm actually going to uh, tell the end user, OK, this is where you need the, uh, which services are going to be available on the network, which functions do you want on the network, and which providers do you want to use for those particular functions. So as you can see here, for example, port forwarding uses the virtual router provider, which is the, yeah, basically the network function virtualization construct that actually provides a low balancing firewalling, et cetera. And for the virtual networking, we're using the Open Daylight plugin. Virtual networking is the name we've used to select which software-defined networking vendor is actually going to be used to provide this particular network service. So with this offering, we can actually allow the user to, uh, uh, to create a network. So up at this point, it's all admin work. And from here on, it's actually up to the user to actually do stuff. So this is what the user actually does. So the user, the first thing the user usually do, does is he creates a network. In CloudStack, there's a, uh, uh, if you use the UI, you create a network. And once you create a network, you can actually create an instance into the network. So this is part of the uh, Open Daylight uh, UI. And the code inside the plugin that we've written um, works in the following uh, setup. You create a network in CloudStack. Nothing happens yet. You create your first virtual machine in CloudStack, and the network switches from state allocated to state implemented. During the implementation phase of this network, it will actually start to create a couple of things. So the first hurdle we had to solve here is how to get uh, the configuration that we know about the hypervisors into the open daylight controller. Um, there were two trains of thought here. First of all, it's like, OK, if we connect the open daylight controller, we can immediately push our entire cluster setup to open daylight and make sure it's all pre-configured. And we went this route at the first uh, iteration of the plugin, but actually decided not to pursue this. The problem here is that if you make changes to your cluster setup later on, you need to have some kind of synchronization uh, between Open Daylight and CloudStack to say, OK, I'm adding a host to my cluster, and now I'm suddenly going to have to add it to Open Daylight as well. We decided for this first version to go for a really easy way of doing it, just when you boot a virtual machine, it knows where the virtual machine is going to be provisioned. And when the virtual machine is provisioned, it knows that to push that particular configuration to the hypervisor. So when the first virtual machine is actually provisioned, it sends a call to Open Daylight saying, OK, I've got a new hypervisor. Can you connect it? And this is a call to the Connection Manager uh, API in, uh, in Open Daylight. Connection Manager API will actually create a new node in Open Daylight of type Open vSwitch and will connect the OVSDB plugin. And part of connecting the OVSDB plugin is an auto discovery process that will discover all the existing switches on the OVSDB and actually create two specific switches. And one of the switches that creates is the BR int, which is, we call it the integration bridge. This switch is configured to use normal switching uh, uh, capabilities and have uh, VLANs. So any machine you connect to it in a particular VLAN will be available to all the other machines on the same switch in the same VLAN just like you would in a regular sense. And the other one is the BR10. And the BR10 interface is a flow-controlled uh, switch, meaning that without actual pushing any flows, nothing will happen on that switch. And this is the one we're going to use later on to actually drive traffic using the overlay network to the other hypervisors in the network. When this switch is actually uh, provisioned and the Open Daylight reports that it now knows about this particular hypervisor, uh, we send it a network. And for us, this was actually interesting because here we're using the Neutron API. So Neutron has a concept about networks and ports, and we reused that uh, particular idea to push our own data into the system. So we push the network, we give it a unique identifier, which is the same as the unique identifier used for the network in CloudStack, and we push a port. And a port here is like a virtual, uh, a virtual network interface. So at this point, 
there's only a single machine running on the hypervisor, but we already know about the hypervisor, and we know that there's an uh, open daylight suddenly knows that there's a network with a certain UUID, and there's at least one machine configured to use this network with a certain UUID. The second step and is when you boot the next virtual machine. And now I'm going to assume that you use a system that allows you to make sure that this virtual machine boots on the second hypervisor, otherwise it would be a very boring talk. Um, so we're going to actually we're going to go through the same motions again. So uh, we start the virtual machine, CloudSec will try to look up for, uh, the hypervisor, uh, sees that it doesn't know about the hypervisor yet by sending a call to the connection manager saying, hey, do you know about this particular IP address? No, I don't know about this particular IP address. So it sends another connect call to the, to the hypervisor. At that point, it will yeah, run through the same procedure, set up the BRN, set up the BR10, uh, and basically return back to uh, CloudStack, OK, it's done. Well, we already know about the network. That's something we can actually check. So the interesting magic happens when we actually start the port. By starting the port on the second hypervisor, we're actually sending a signal to open daylight, like, OK, I've got a machine living on hypervisor number one, and I've now got a machine running on hypervisor number two. Open Daylight recognizes that those two ports belong to the same network. If they belong to the same network, it means that we need some kind of co configuration between the two. Uh, it checks if there's actually a tunnel interface between the two. So this is the, really the magic of the open uh, of yeah, overlay networking. When it sees that there needs to be communication between the two uh, hypervisors, it will create a tunnel. Uh, in this case, we're using GRE tunnels, but we can just easily switch them to VXLAN tunnels or any kind of tunneling uh, system currently supported by uh, Open vSwitch. And then we need to start provisioning flows. And the flows is yeah, really telling the system what to do. So on the BRINT, we're using the regular uh, switching flows, uh, using VLANs to separate the individual networks. So every network in Neutron has a yeah, built-in VLAN in the Open vSwitch that we use to communicate between the BRINT and with the patch port on, uh, th that's going to the BR10. And on the BR10, we're going to use flows. The fun part here is since we already have all the information in the port, so we know exactly what MAC address uh, is used, we, we know which IP address is used, we can make really detailed flows what we want to happen. So we're not using any controller magic yet, but we're really pushing static flows like, OK, I know if I get a packet from this particular MAC address, uh, and its destination is this other particular MAC address, or uh, it's going to be in this network, I'm going to push it to this particular tunnel. Every tunnel has a separation idea, so we know that a tunnel belongs to a certain network. So by pushing this flow on the tunnels, or all the tunnels, uh, the moment you have more hypervisors, we know that the traffic is isolated and only belongs to a certain network. And it's also a, bu a yeah, built-in security, because it's automatically anti-spoofing. You can't just push any uh, MAC address on a network and ex yeah, expect it to be delivered to the other end of the network. It will actually only work if you have the correct MAC address. But since we are a cloud ma management system, we know the MAC addresses of all the machines we make. We have a built-in security, some kind of port isolation. And we try to limit the traffic over the, over the various tunnels <coughs> to not yeah, completely saturate the tunnels if the traffic is, has to go to another, uh, another switch or another hypervisor. Um, and Open Daylight yeah, performs all this completely automatically. There's nothing I need to do from Apache Cloud Stack to actually make this happen. All the flows get pushed. There's uh, going to be a couple of special flows pushed to allow the traffic to go out into the tunnel. And actually, when uh, fl flows exit the tunnel on the other end, we will see, OK, this is part of tunnel number A. Part of tunnel number A is part of network VLAN 100. So we're actually going to distribute this particular packet, send it back to the BRINT, tag that VLAN 100. And with VLAN 100, it will be sent to the individual virtual machines on each, uh, on each side. And then you have the moment we, everybody was waiting for. We have Ping established a network connection. So is this going to be it? No. Like I said in the beginning of my talk, Open Daylight is really a project that supports a lot. Uh, it supports OpenDAV, we don't do that yet. It supports virtual tenant network, we don't do it yet. It supports something that I haven't thought of that's going to be in there tomorrow, and we don't support it yet. So this is very much a work in progress. Um, I'm happy I was to, uh, uh, I'm allowed to show it here to tell people about a little bit about the overlay networking, but there's so much more that can be done. 
So it's really just a first step in the whole process of getting support for open daylight. A lot of people were mentioning already, yay, Apache Cloud Stack supports open daylight. What we do, but it's only really a first step. There's so much more to do, and I really hope we can continue uh, working on this. And next to yeah, having a technical advantage of yeah, being able to leverage two uh, different projects, we've actually seen a lot of community advantages to actually working with, with two projects. Because we are now uh, talking, uh, there's people from Apache Cloud Stack talking to people from Open Daylight, people from Open Daylight talking to Apache Cloud Stack. And actually, in all the discussions we had in the, in the channel and all the other uh, uh, environments where we, meet, where we met up, we're actually talking with a lot of OpenStack people as well. So we're trying to really coordinate and get a lot of ideas going. If you put more than a, a couple of geeks in the room, you get a, a couple of great ideas. So even here in, this, uh, in FOSDEM this year, by talking to people, you get more ideas about networking, more ideas about how to share ideas. So this plugin for Apache CloudStack, yeah, it was co-developed by people uh, working on OpenStack. They didn't write any code, but they contributed ideas and they gave feedback about how it should work. And the same went the other way around. Uh, by being there in the channel, having discussions about what this project should do and where it should be going, we helped each other. So uh, for me, this was really a nice example about open collaboration and really the power of working in an open source community. So that actually b brings me to the last point. Yeah, if you have any bright ideas about where this uh, should be going, uh, feel free to uh, ask or make any comments. So that's it, a little bit faster than I initially expected. So hopefully a lot of time uh, to answer any of your questions. So any questions? No? Okay, thanks a lot. <laughs>